and welcome to the rundown on women's football talk now before we get into today's video make sure you smash that subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell so you never miss a video of ours and that you're following us on twitter and on instagram for all the latest news and stories as and when it happens so it is the first rundown of 2023 as we look ahead to the weekend's fixtures as club football here in england returns in the WSL and we have some fantastic games to look forward to this weekend and we'll start off with the big game in the WSL this weekend and it is on Sunday at uh, 12 midday uh, for the UK so one o'clock Central European time and that is of course Arsenal versus Chelsea first versus second now Arsenal do currently have a game in hand over Chelsea um, has Chelsea played their first game of the season um, their postponed first game of the season earlier in this uh, calendar season before we turned into 2023 where Arsenal have yet to play it um, so that's why Chelsea currently are on top of the table playing 10 games compared to a lot of the other teams are only playing 9 however they do actually have a 3 point advantage over uh, Arsenal so it's going to be a very interesting game in this one um, because obviously we could potentially see Arsenal's two new signings, Katrine Molecule and Victoria Pulova, make their debuts for Arsenal. Um, and obviously, this is going to be the first time that Arsenal haven't played with without um, Vivian Miedemar and Beth Mead. Obviously, Beth Mead has missed games and has been out for a longer period, but obviously, Vivian and Miedemar tearing her ACL in the Champions League. Uh, this is the first time that Arsenal will play a competitive league match. Uh, without her, so it's going to be very interesting to see how we see Arsenal lineup. Um, obviously, apart from Miedema, I would expect pretty much a similar lineup to what Jonas Odebell has been going for a lot of the season. So, Manuel Zinsberger in goal, Steph Catley, uh, Rafael Souza. We'll probably see Leah Williamson come into defence instead of Lotta Warburg Moy. Uh, either Noel Moritz or Laura Wienreuter on the right hand side, and then have Freedom Arnhem, Leah Volte, Katie McCabe. Caitlin Ford. I would predict um, Victoria Palova will start in when Vivian Miedema has been playing behind the central striker and then uh, I'd expect Blackstone yes, to lead the line. Uh, that will be my sort of predicted 11 for that game. Um, obviously uh, it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how Palova and Katrine Molecule fit into this team. Um, it's going to be also the first time that we won't see Jordan Nobbs appear in an Arsenal team sheet at all for the rest of the season, obviously after she completed her January transfer window move to Aston Villa. Chelsea on the other hand have been uh, quiet in terms of uh, transfers, obviously not needing to do anything as they stand on top of the WSL table. Um, I think Emma Hayes' side, their main thing is about getting players tied down to new deals, so that's going to be very interesting to see. Heading into this one though, over 40,000 tickets have been sold for this game at the Emirates Stadium and if you're unavailable to watch it and are in England it will be on Sky Sports. Fantastic top of the table clash, I don't know how I see this going, um, If we, I would say possibly a draw or maybe a late late winner from either side, I couldn't predict who though will win it so that is uh, where we start off on Sunday. Then we'll have a look at the rest of the weekend's games now. We have Aston Villa versus Tottenham, two sides who have been busy, or mainly Aston Villa, who have been the busy of the sides this January transfer window, bringing in Jordan Nobbs and uh, Lucy Staniforth, whilst Tottenham have brought in Beth England from Chelsea. So they are the Saturday lunchtime kickoff at half past 12. And then the rest of the games see Everton take on Reading at 1pm uh, UK time. At 5 past 2 is Manchester United versus Liverpool. Obviously, Manchester United are currently third in that WSL race and if Arsenal were to lose or draw and Manchester United beat Liverpool by two or more goals then United can overtake Arsenal and head into second place. Uh, then the three o'clock game sees Leicester take on Brighton and Hove Albion, uh, two teams at the bottom of the table in the WSL but obviously this will be uh, Brighton manager Jens Schur's first game in charge of Brighton in a competitive fixture so it'll be very interesting to see what he can do there at Brighton obviously we know of his past success at Bayern Munich so can he translate uh, his German tactics and ways I think in, into the English game and obviously Leicester will be needing to pick up points 
uh, as they haven't picked up a single point so far this season. And then the final game sees West Ham United take on Manchester City from quarter to seven GMT. So some really interesting games this weekend and it is good to have football back at a competitive high level here in England. So let's have a look at the rest of the fixtures this weekend. There's only a couple of other, uh, the big leagues uh, that are playing this weekend. So we'll start off in Spain, uh, we have a couple of games on Saturday, including Barcelona traveling to Sporting Huevuela and Atletico Madrid playing Villarreal. Uh, the rest of the games take place on Sunday. Real Sociedad travel into Valencia and Real Madrid hosting Real Betis. So that should be a really interesting fixture to see. Over in France uh, this weekend, we have the one game on Friday as PSG take on Rodez uh, with the rest of the games taking place on Saturday, apart from Paris FC who play Fleury, 91 on Sunday. So Lyon, they travel to Soyo Charent on Saturday afternoon. And finally, over in Italy, uh, again, a lot of the games taking place on uh, Saturday. We have Inter Milan taking on Sampdoria, Como taking on Pomigliano and Fiorentina versus Roma, which will be a really interesting game to watch. And then Sunday we have AC Milan versus Parma and Juventus versus Sassuolo, which uh, obviously uh, Juventus in second place this season, while Sassuolo having a bit of a drop off down into seventh place. But it should be a really good second half of the season. Uh, over in Italy as well and can Roma go all the way and win the Italian league title it remains to be seen uh, other stuff that's happening in the world of football we have the NWSL draft this evening so uh, Sunday uh, Thursday evening sorry um, where we expecting a uh, lot of people will also be expecting Alyssa Thompson to be the first overall pick going to Angel FC and if you can't keep up to date with that uh, live we will be covering it with tweets and having graphics of all the picks that happen so make sure like I said at the start you're following us on our social media pages for all the latest on that. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with our weekly transfers uh, video where we'll have a look back at all the transfers over the past seven days that we obviously didn't get to conclude from last week and uh, we do have a dedicated page for that on our website so head over to wftalk.com and then click on the transfer news bit where we have every deal that has happened in this January window but until tomorrow uh, obviously we'll be back with the recap at the start of next week to look back at all the weekend's action and talking points across the world of women's football but until then like I said at the start make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notification bell turned on so you never miss a video of ours and that you're following us on Twitter and on Instagram for all the latest news and stories as and when it happens and until next time we'll see you soon